Welcome back to another episode of the Twisted Tubs podcast. I am your host, Stephen Tubbery, a.k.a. Twisted Tubs. He is the man that is a savage as hell. He is Steve fucking savage. Welcome to the fucking show, my friend. Cheers, my man, for having me on. My friend, I should say cousin, because we're actually blood related. That's well, yeah, we're blood thing. brothers, man. We're blood brothers. Fucking feel it, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been running through the veins. But I'm, um, yeah, man, I'm fucking happy to finally get you on the show, man, because I know you're busy. Yeah, out. I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And uh, yeah, I'm like, and you, before we came on the show, Steve had informed me he just came from a workout. And um, my workout was literally like crying because my kids wouldn't go to sleep. But this is two minds and two different worlds <laughs> beaten right there. Like, but, um, so I am sweating here. I'm, I'm sure as this video goes on, my head will become less and less like a tomato. But you have to see. I how mean, it you plays got to lose the blood rush the opposite way, man. That's what it will Come down and go back up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. But um, how have you how have you been, man? How has how been locked down and all that crack? You've just been working out like a beast, really, haven't you? Um, this lockdown, man. I had to be honest with you. This lockdown, I'm actually loving stuff, man. Um, like um. The second lockdown, I bogged me down big time, you know, yeah. work wise, training wise, and it did, man. It did, I, I, and I, I done that whole negative thing that was like, I can't work, I can't train, I can't wrestle, a lot of that. She fucking got me nowhere, you know. But um, this lockdown, um, I'm sure as we unfold this conversation, I can yeah. let you in on it a bit more. But uh, yeah, good, really good, man. I'm, I'm loving training, um, I'm working away. Not working away. I'm I'm doing bits and pieces in my studio, um, and working on a few other bits, trying to put a gym together and stuff at the moment. So, yeah, good, really, really good, actually. And I mean, and now that you say that, man, it's actually crazy because during the first lockdown was when I hit my crazy bubble of like my brain went fried, and I was like, oh my god, and I was watching all the other lads do things, and I was getting pissed off, and I was just because I, I I didn't have a clue what to do. This lockdown very much like yourself has been the most productive one for me because it was very much a thing it was like sink or swim moment it was like i'm not letting this one kick my ass and yeah exactly man and you know what <laughs> yeah well there you go exactly man you know people are getting up and doing something and maybe yeah. it does, does take people like a certain amount of time when we're sitting at home um scratching our fucking balls you know what i mean just being like i can't do this or i can't do that or i'm not being productive enough i'm not doing this and um this boy, I, and I have seen a lot of people being productive during this lockdown, you know what I mean? Just being, just tipping away, especially training, because I follow a lot of guys that are training and stuff, and um, and guys that I always want to tip away with training, but really are making a good go at it, you know, which is cool yeah. to see, man, you know? A couple of wrestlers and stuff I see up down the country, um, that since the first lockdown, I'm actually giving a straight shout out as well to um, um, Car- Carl O'Reilly, City Flexer. Demi Corvin as well, the two wrestlers. Um, that I how in God's name they've been training with her training since the first lockdown. There's many other wrestlers I see training, but there are two guys I follow every single day religiously. CT Flex or man, he's just um top notch stuff training like an animal constantly, and um, it's good motivation for me as a wrestler to see other guys out there still beating the shit out of it, you know. So, and you yeah. really, really just plugging on and going for it, Steve, you know. What's that? I mean, and just to see him plugging on and going for it, because I mean, I, I'll be honest, I, I've been looking, I've been, I won't lie to you, I've been stalking your Instagram, right? <laughs> and yeah. to, be see, to see, like, um, just, just you know, even when, like, even when, like, you seem like you're, you're not, your head isn't in the farm for it, you're still pushing through. And, it, it's, and that's the difference right there, right? Is when you can actually but, but, go out and do it when your head's not in the right the place to do man, it. Man, I, I, yeah, you know, um, like I said, like, this, the second lockdown bogged me down, man, and, um, hmm. And it just brought me to a place, man, that I just a really miserable place that, I, that I've been before, you know what I mean? And I, I, nothing good comes from it, and it's just not happy. And, um, and I, like, at the end of it, I love training as well, you know what I mean? I do love training. And, and, it, like, and even if, if I was bogged down or feeling shitty, I was still training on top of it because I felt like I had to train, I had to do this. Yeah. But the fun of it and the enjoyment of it is not there, you know what I mean? And what is the point of getting up in the morning if there's no fun or enjoyment in fucking anything like that? Yeah. Um, and at this moment, I have a goal in mind. I'm 32 years of age, man, you know what I mean? Um, I love wrestling very much, so, you know what I mean? And and like, and I know by the time I want to come back, I want to be ready this time. I mean, ready, ready. You know what I mean? Like, I've been injured before and I've come back and um, to be ready, you know what I mean? But being ready for me at the moment is up here, like, and it, it, my focus is, is 100% up here, man, you know? Um, 
So I mean, I was in bed a while ago, and I, and I sent my like I was out of line before I got it, before I was training. Which I'm going to tell you how my actual either went. I was doing a bit of work in the gym and stuff, and blah, 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 and I came home and I was lying on the pillow and I was I had my face like this, and I was like, Ugh. Ugh. and my missus was like, "Are you just going to go to sleep or what?" I was like, "I'm going to sleep. I'm supposed to be a wrestler." <laughs> That's my actual my focus. Like I have to get up and do something. I'm planning. Oh, I have to, do this. and and I did, man. You know what I mean? And it just it's just some of the small little things, man. I, and the oh, workout sorry. didn't kill myself. It was, it was it was a twenty minute kind of a fast kind of workout. But I know tomorrow, because I'm like, I'm like my own worst enemy sometimes it comes to this. You know what I mean, if I didn't do that tonight, tomorrow I'd be kicking myself. Why the fuck did I do that? I could have done this and I could have done that. And, um, so it's just about a headspace. And like I said, man, being ready for me at the moment isn't necessarily being like aesthetically, physically looking like ready. It's like as long as I'm ready up here, because I, I just, I know this sounds like a cliche saying and stuff, you know what I mean? But when my head is in a good place, and I'm focused on this like daily at the moment, daily, daily, daily. Stuff just comes, man. It just yeah. materializes and just kind of happens. I don't know how to, can't explain it. And if I could bottle it and sell it, I'd be a fucking millionaire. But if, when you have that focus, that drive, that some bit there, it just comes. I don't I, like, you know, so yeah. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That, no, it, yeah. it, I, I agree with you 100%. It is very much positive thinking. It's like, I mean, I was only talking about it the other day. It's like, if you, if your head's, um, if your head's continuously in like a negative, um, like mindset, then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to receive negativity in and, and subconsciously, do you know what I mean? So if you're, if you're thinking and um, like very positively and you're pushing, do you know what I mean? Things will slide and things, I always say to, to uh, my brother, um, Grant, as you know very well, and yeah, yeah. Uh, um, things always find a way to balance out. Do you know what I mean? You can only be down here for so long. You have to like if you're up here, then you you will end up down here. But it always comes this way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The world is yeah. a weird place. It's a world. It's a weird thing. It just always finds to balance out. Um. So I I love that you've gotten like a full a full mindset like and and the fact that you're like you, you know be like because we we know this lockdown and all this pandemic is going to go away eventually and things are going to get back to normal. It will, yeah, mentally yeah. and physically ready to get back in that ring, which I hate you for in a way as well, man. Because I'm old now and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I just want to do it so badly, and I just feel like my <laughs> body's so broken up now at this point from all the years of doing it, you know. Um, now I reckon I could, like I said this to you before, I reckon if I give myself enough time, I reckon if I give set myself a goal, I can I can get there. I love seeing your posts and I love seeing the things you're doing and I love seeing the drive you have to get back because I know about the injuries. I'm serious, man. I appreciate it. No, I do. Come here, look. I, I, I told you in Dolan's nightclub uh, when I was at the show. Yeah, yeah you were a motherfucker, man. That was a, that was a real emotional night for me. Then you came over to me and I was like, if I'm going to start fucking crying here because... And I nearly made you I crack. Know, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, and I, It was really emotional for me and, and like, because... It's one of those moments, and especially like in Dolan's for me. Um, look, I mean, I there's no hiding shit, right? You're, you're, you're my first cousin, you know, struggles and strives that people have been through, you know. And mm -hmm. it might not have been WrestleMania, and there might not have been a hundred thousand people there, yeah. but there was enough people in Dolan's that made me feel like, like it, I can't explain it, man. It was just a really kind of emotional night for me, like personally, and a couple of wrestlers that, um, we're working the show new as well, you know. And then when I seen yourself, you came over, and I was like, "Oh, I need to get out of here now," because I had that lump in my throat. And when people talk about wrestling is predetermined and blah 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 and this and that, you could see that night like that's as real as it gets for me. You know what I mean? Like that's like that's an emotion. Again, man, if you could bottle that, you know. But then again, if you could bottle it, it's easy way out. It's the, the hard the work to get there is where I don't think enough people enjoy, you know, and um. But yeah, sorry, I cut across what you were saying. But you know, oh god, bringing man. up those, but that was um, I like just a, just a limbo. And I'll put it like Dolan is a venue, like that that's that's a great venue. But there's something about Limerick for me. You know what I mean? That like it could be anywhere in Limerick. It could be a field in Limerick, like a wrestling in front of people. And it was I still have the same feeling. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud of Limerick. You know what I mean? And like. And this isn't just a cliche or something that I put in a T-shirt or something. Like you're from Limerick, and you're from the heart and soul of Limerick. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, and Limerick gets up, and it has got a bad rap. And I think a lot of people kind of still dwell on the fact Limerick has a bad rap, but we can. Do you know what I mean? Limerick has a bad rap, and we can still do this. It's like fuck the bad rap, man. 
know what I mean? Never mind about the fucking bad rap. Let's focus about like the positivity that comes out of Limerick as far as like um, sporting, boxers, rugby players, wrestlers. Now you know, um, it can be a very positive place if you want it to be. Anywhere, anywhere can be a negative place if you want to paint a neg- paint a negatively. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, just I'm very proud to have, like wrestled in Limerick and have just Limerick people behind me, which was um, it was just it was just good. It was just. I, yeah, I, and I remember, um, Steve, because I was there, I remember I talked to you before the show. And I, I, and I think for me personally, I don't know if I ever told you this part of it, but because um, as, you, as you said, we are cousins. <laughs> so um, it yeah. was, I remember we had talked um, a few days before the show. I was actually texting you like leading up to the show. And I was very excited to be there to see you perform. But I knew you were injured. And I yeah, swear okay. to God, I was, I, was so, I was so happy for you. And I was so nervous for you at the same time. Um, but I think yeah, it was yeah. um, it, it just the whole thing because I mean, geez, the match with LJ Cleary was 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 a fantastic match, like you know, and the whole the whole you saw the response, man, you know. And I I remember what you were saying. I remember going out the doorway. I found you in a doorway before your match. That was when yeah. you were like, oh man, I'm, no, I can't talk to you now. Like it was after <laughs> it was after the match where it was because there's a photograph taken of us in the hall. Yeah, yeah, you must uh, find that somewhere. Found that photo somewhere actually. Oh, do you know what? I actually think I might even put it up as the thumbnail for this video. There, there you go. There, there you go. go. That's that's a perfect one to put up. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it was that one. It was it was it got, and funny enough, um, the second question I had on, on my list was, what does Dolan's mean to you? And you covered that. So what I'm going to go into it is, one, like I've known you all my life, or all of your life. But yeah, one thing, yeah. I don't think I've ever asked this question. Why the name Savage? Um, do, do, do you know what? This is a funny, yeah, okay. This is a one that's never really been told. Um, little s- small, tiny past. When I first touched at wrestling training, okay, I was only 15. Um, I lied, I said I was 16, but I was actually 15. And what I would do was I used to go to camps in Bray because I couldn't just get up there for one day training, so I would have to go to like camps, which they had in um, it was NWA Ireland this time, which became Five Factory. And um, the, the, like I, so I learned my basic like bumping and rolls and stuff, which would be from Fergal Levis, you know, Tim Baller and Paul Tracy and those yeah, guys. I um, did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually so, didn't uh, know it was, uh, it was um it was better at all. That's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I do remember like yeah. So so we used to travel to Bray, and um, sometimes the, the guys might leave me stay in the gym because I had no money. I was only fifteen, like. Um, so I got to the camps there and um, that was it uh, and then I started trying to train regularly but being a 15 year old trying to get the fucking bray from Limerick was a bit of a struggle and anyway so we had a small um, it was like a friends and family show sometimes they used to do shows at the end of these camps and they were like okay we have a match here with you here and um, you can have a tag match with this guy so I was an old friend of mine called John Jordan that I went to school with and <laughs> Um, so they gave him, they were like, what, what, what are you going to be? So they were, they were like, blah, blah, blah. we'll get you in a minute, Steve, we'll get you in a minute. So they're like, what's this guy's giving me? Like? And one of the guys was like, he's crap. <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, him, he's crap. So they're like, we're going to call you crap lad. That was John. And I was like, oh, if they're going to come over to me, no one call me crap Steve or something. They're like, what's your wrestling name? And I must have been watching like a Randy Savage thing or something. I had to have been. And they were like, uh, Steve Savage. And they're like, what? Yeah, Steve Savage, that's it. And that's literally it. That's literally how it stuck. And that's how it became um, a thing. And then when I started um, tattooing my actual career, <laughs> yeah. um, I just thought it just stuck, man. You know what I mean? Like, I just, it just kind of stuck sometimes when you're kind of, I don't know, sometimes when, I don't know, you don't want to put a full, when you're kind of, like, Limerick's a small enough city. Sometimes putting your name out there, if you're out here sometimes and putting your name out there, something maybe people would be super personal with you or something, you know. So you're just gonna keep this work life over there and now I've just become Steve Savage, it's just my name, like simple as so. I mean But that was it. That's that's literally how the name came about, you know. Because yeah, I, I, and it's it's weird, like I mean, obviously, do you know what I mean? I've known you since you were since you were like you know, born and, and a kid and as you grew up and stuff. But um it's very much a thing of like where I I, I actually was like I was doing my notes and I was kind of going, do you know what? In the lifetime I've known Steve, I've never actually asked him like why why his mind landed on the name Savage. Like I, I remember and 
that leads me to another question because I'm like I remember ages back and we were talking about wrestling and I think it was in your shop I was in the, the, the it was at um, Hard Knocks Point One it was the first shop and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and um, it was the, you, you told me about another gimmick it was the battery oh my god yeah, yeah yeah you're yeah. touching everything yeah, man. the battery <laughs> yeah um, Jesus that was a backyard gimmick man and that that came from a Metallica song the battery was a Metallica song um yeah, that was, sure, look, that was backyard days, you know, like I used to, try, I was called Stevie C at one time, where I could point at myself like Rob Van Damme, there was another one. <laughs> um, um, yeah, guys, it's just, I think, like, it is what it is, man, people, you know it's yourself, like, you know, I've never grown out of wrestling, ever grown out of wrestling, you know what I mean? You know, and it, and it is what it is, and I have no qualms in saying, like, I love pro wrestling yeah. and like some because I have stuff in my shop and my workstation like I have wrestling shit everywhere so I get people come in and it's always a good talking point because a lot of people go oh my god I used to the amount of times I hear I used to watch that I used to watch it I used to watch it you know and like I've never didn't used to watch wrestling I've always watched wrestling you know what I mean always, yeah. like wrestling to me is what soccer and rugby is to other people and I'm sure you're the same you know yeah, like, very much some things you grow out of I used to watch soccer do you know what I mean like, like when I was a kid but it, like, I would never phrase like, "Oh, I, I used to watch soccer." You know what I mean? But but it is always a fun point. Like, and I like having wrestling related stuff, um, especially when you're a super wrestling fan. Like, you know, every, you know, you're always like, "Oh, remember the Rock?" Of course, I remember. and then you bring up a Rock match, and I'm sitting down chatting to my client, and yeah. or someone's up to bring up Jeff Hardy or something, you know. And it's always a fun talking point. So I guess talk wrestling at my work, which is a cool thing as well. Sometimes you know. Funny, funny enough that like you were saying about like you know like like um um from the names and stuff because um do you know like the twisted tubs name that like has now become my thing? Yeah, like, the name just, of just, now. Do you just, know where that came from? What you're used to, man. <laughs> oh, but, um, they, what was the that thing? name? The name twisted tubs actually came from when I was wrestling as Ace Alex Christian Edinburgh. That was the name. That was the character. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. Yeah. I, so, do, you, do you remember, remember with the white mask and the jacket? Yeah, so I'm, I'm talking to you, forgetting other people are probably going to watch this. I know they're, they're only learning, but like, but I remember you doing this. I remember you telling me this. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know where it comes from. <laughs> yeah. What happened was we did a match, right, where it was like I took a blow to the head and went Mick Foley kind of crazy and then um, started to hear voices. And, 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 and then I was, um, they, like, it, I obviously the story did never pan out because we stopped wrestling. And, um, you know, because obviously, you know, we were getting older, bodies were broken up. And, we weren't wrestling in a ring. No, we were wrestling like a ring match. So this is the difference of what we did was was um we it wasn't like your backyard, it's all weapons. It was like we structured a match like it was in a ring, but we just had no Yeah, weapons. yeah, yeah. It was such a bitch, man, you know. The fact that we like I mean that was the goal to get to get to the ring and do it. And then just two discs popped out of my back. But what happened was is um I created twisted tubs off of the back of Ace as a, like an alter ego, like the darker side of him. And then, yes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then as I went into the acting and all that kind of stuff, and it just it just became a, a tagline and a, and, a, and a gimmick thing. I was I, even when I was like doing the acting, it was a gimmick attached to it, like on oh, a twisted tubs, you know. And and lo and behold, it's the common thing. It's become like. A, but it's still, I, I I think I, re, I was listening to some, a Jim Cornette thing recently, and I heard that, just a small. I keep saying it in my head recently, like recently. There's a like some guy done a move and some old NWA crappy promotion stuff. And apparently Dusty, your man done a move and made a balls with it or something. And Dusty Rhodes came back into the locker room and was like, hey, don't do shit you don't know. Or stick to shit that you do know. So every time in my head, I'm like, yeah, maybe I might get up there and do that 450. I'm like, don't do shit you can't do. Just stick to what you know. So stick to the nails, stick to what you know. It works. And Okay, so since we're talking um, gimmicks and everything else, let's let's deep in, dive into the meat of it, all right? And let's talk about the decade-long gimmick from the rock star in the twenties to the pro wrestler in the thirties. Okay, so, like, that journey, like what, like obviously because we've talked about it over the years. Me and you've kind of had similar kind of arcs of like just like partying like a rock star and then getting to a point where like on need to change this shit now, which you know what I mean. And then okay, you know, yeah, okay. now when you've Good. completely like hit the axle and sent it to the roof, my friends, you know what I mean? So well, yeah, just yeah, it doesn't no, have to be I'm like in depth to just I'm glad you asked that because I've never actually I've done a few podcasts and a couple of interviews and stuff and I've never yeah. had I oh, 
Have we lost Steve? Can you hear me, Steve? Because I think we're after dropping the signal here. Did we drop? No, I'm here still here now. You think you did a second ago, but you all right now? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay, I'm good now. We go again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I've never actually directly talked about this, and, and I, I might have hinted at it in a few posts and stuff, you know. Um, and that is a thing that I say through my younger twenties. <coughs> I don't say I live a rock star life. I said I live a I lived a pretend rock star life because what yeah. I was doing was hiding a lot of shit under a lot of drinks and a lot of other stupid substances. So I've never actually come out and talked about this on a thing, and I do want to know because I think I'm in a good place. I've never talked about my sobriety. I've never talked about drinks or drug use or anything. Um, so here you have it. You know, um, that was my early twenties, man. You know what I mean? I did that whole party rock star life and. Um, pretend rock star life. But what I was doing was just shoveling shit on top of shit, on top of shit, on top of shit, you know? And um, and a lot of people were true, man. You know what I mean? Some of the most fucking intelligent, most driven people that I know or have trained with have all had that shitty patch, man, that shitty rock, you know, that started off on a super good high. I, I mean, let's be honest, everyone knows the slope it goes, like, and, you know? So um, I have, man, like, and then what happens is, like, you start to struggle. And I do, and I've struggled with alcoholism and drug addiction, um, dug myself kind of out of it, you know, not an easy fucking task, you know. Yeah. Um, really happy where I am now, you know. Um, so that's that little part covered. So I'll just tell you where it kind of, a change happened, you know, like I did eventually get to my mid-twenties and I was like, I can't do this anymore, man. You know what I mean? I just can't do this anymore. Like, you know, awake at five, six in the morning, your eyes like this fucking this, and you know, drinking here, can't hold down relationships and blah blah blah. And I just I can't do it, like simple fucking as so um something changed. You know, I had a couple of good mates that chatted to me, sent me down. They were like, Steve, we love you as a person, you know what I mean? You I know you have never done any harm to anyone, but said like, we can't fucking be around you anymore, man. You know what I mean? Like for our own mental health, or our own being. We just can't be fucking around you, like. And it was a big eye open, man. Because it was it was the first time I remember going, "Fuck me, man! I can't even be around me now." Like, do you know what I mean? You know it's bad. You know what I mean? You know, shit just got to be fucking not good. Um, and this, like, and again, I'm being totally honest with you, man. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to big myself. I'm going to tell you exactly what I felt like. The sliminess and the lying to people that you fucking like, you know, I it, I always felt wrong about it. You know, like, hi, were you drinking last night? Were you out last night? No, I wasn't, man. No, I wasn't. When you're fucking hard, like you're up on a photo on Facebook at two o'clock in the morning, you're fucking eyes like this, and, you know. So, um, fast forward a little bit, and I was like, fuck this, man. So I just started training, started cycling, started doing, um, because I was always too nervous to go to a gym at first, because I thought if I go to a gym, people are going to see my flaws, and they're going to be know that I'm not the cool guy I oh, portray man. myself as. You know, and I was, man, and it, it mentally blocked me for years for stepping in the gym, because I think that, like, I'm short of time. I still, people still do this, man. I still see people on Instagram and stuff. They're like, fuck me, man, that guy looks unbelievable. And, and there's a touch of jealousy, but that's a, that's a wrong, raw feeling. That as a, my age now, I shouldn't have that feeling. You know what I mean? But like, but it's there. And it's a fucking, you can't buy the feeling. Like, it is what it is. Um, but back then, everything's impression. You know, you're like, you, like, I don't know. I think I was just, in my head, think that I was like, whatever idol I followed at the time. And funny enough, they all fucking died, you know. So maybe, maybe don't always follow your idols, man, you know. Um, but I started training, and eventually I got into a gym and stuff, and started doing this, and and I loved it, man. You know what I mean? I really did love it, and I'd love if this like message could try touch someone or something, all right? That it's like something I was so scared to do for so long, and like and I and holding myself back for one little thought in my head, one little fucking stupid thought. And the second that I just made that little plunge, no matter, and I, I felt overweight, man. I felt sloppy. I felt like I smelled like fags and drink. And but once I kind of switched that, and again, I can't explain it fully. I can't push someone to do it. But like, if you just have that little nudge, you just go in the door. Man, I never, not, I never look back. 
You know, I, mean? I never, I never said, what the fuck was I nervous about? Everyone else is in this gym. No one's looking at me thinking, your man's a fool, your man's this or that. Everyone here is working on themselves. No yeah. one's there to judge anyone. And if you're in a fucking gym, gym to judge someone, fuck off. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it, it's kind of a personal, uh, a personal, um, it's like you're personally attacking your own mind is what, is what that is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the more you think about it, man, and, and again, and I, I've seen people do it and I feel sorry for them because, and I still do with certain things myself. I'm not, there's no hiding it, but it, it, it's like, in, in a way, it's self-sabotage. You know, because yeah. even like, and I, I felt overweight, man, a few years ago, you know what I mean? And the more I felt overweight, and this sounds so cliche, I was eating because I was fat, I was fat because I was eating, you know? But it does have that cycle, man, you know what I mean? That just, um, you, in a way, it is self sabotage, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're stopping yourself from doing something that you really want to do, you know? And like being from Limerick as well, a lot of times I find people from Limerick. Are the first at doing something like this is the first major breakout rugby star from Limerick. This is the first yeah. major because Limerick is, in my opinion, it's a large town rather than a small city. Because I find this like not that everyone knows each other's business, but it's very hard for some people to break the mold because it's just it's not the norm. It's not what everyone else is doing, you know. Um, which is which is, is not a great thing, you know. Just because you're from a certain place or a certain neighborhood or a certain village and all the other boys aren't doing that doesn't mean this like you can't go and fucking do it do you know what I mean yeah. so oh, I totally agree so with breaking, yeah because it's it's um it's it, I mean even for, I mean like you look at the two of us here right now like you're you're, you're in your 30s and you're a pro wrestler now I wrestled for years but now I'm in my late 30s and I'm an actor like, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like it's not of the norm, but these are the things that people shouldn't. I mean, I say it to my daughter the whole time, like, uh, Grace, that like, like if if she wants to be a clown in the morning, go to a circus and just do, that's her thing. Do it. I mean, is it cause, yeah. because I think what people forget, man, when you were when you were small, when you were a kid, you know, you didn't know about the big bad world out there, so you were always happy. You know, you might have been annoyed yeah. at some but you were always happy. There was imagination there, and I think. If you you seem to have been able to hold on to some of that imagination, kind of like myself with the acting and things as well, um, and and I, I I say it the whole time. If you don't don't lose it, give any any advice whatsoever. It's just even hold on to a small bit of it because you know that's what it's happiness, man. That's the trick. I think that's what people forget. I love that. I love you after saying that, and, and yeah. it's actually put a little thought in my head that it, and it's true. Uh, and I'm going to just rephrase, go back to wrestling a little yeah. bit because it's dug me out of a lot of holes and blah, blah, blah. When I was in that, that rut and that hole that I free, that I thought was one or two years, but all of a sudden I woke up, I was 27. I was like, oh my God, seven years just passed. The one time that I used to always never get too fucked up or too blah, blah, blah was when WrestleMania was on. And I would, and I would watch WrestleMania like, with my mates or my brother and stuff. And it was that little, it was like just like, Resemblance of I used to remember years when you were a kid when we used to Monday Night Raw was on Friday nights there. Like the first time you could see Monday Night Raw on a Friday night, it was like all oh my even the intro to Raw. I remember me and my brother were like, you know, it was it used to be that was late for us at the time, but it's that excitement, man. You know what I mean? And I'm sure oh, it's yeah, the same. It, and it's that excitement, and um, I don't know, maybe just coming out of that rut, it was like, what makes you happy? It's like watching wrestling, going to wrestling shows, gigs make me happy. You know what I mean? Like, Touched up in drums for a while and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, like, wrestling was always, always um, just a passion, you know? So maybe coming out of that rut, like, and I did say it. I was, I was, I remember a, a friend of mine at the time. I, um, I'll tell you, actually, I was training for an MMA fight. I got in a bit of shape. I lost the was tra- training for an MMA fight. I did not notice. Fight, yeah, yeah, yeah. The best thing that could have ever happened, the fight was pulled a few days beforehand. And um, I always says, I, 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 I trained for you. I trained hard. And I, spent, I was thinking I was confident. At, you know, and I hadn't had that confidence in me in a long time. I was remember, I don't know who I'm fighting. I'm going to fucking win. And I had it, man. It was in my head. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I, like, I haven't seen this Steve in, in a long fucking time, you know? And then the fucking fight was cancelled, man. It was pulled from her evening. And I remember the only way I could describe it is like your girlfriend cheating you and then leaving you with the guy. That feeling, Jesus. oh my God. That's what yeah. it felt like, man. So for two, three days, I was fucking wandering around, going, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, 
change this thing. It's nothing to do with all panicky because I always felt like I have to have something next. And then, I mean, it couldn't have, like, just out of chance, some guy came into my shop, he's like, can I put this poster up here? And there's a poster with Will Ospreay and Jordan Devlin, I think, were wrestling a CCW show. So he stuck the fucking thing up in the window of my shop and it was there for the whole day. And I was leaving the shop and on the back of the thing, it says, do you want to be a pro wrestler? I said, you have to shit me here, like. And it was, it was for a training school in Cork. CCW was there at the time. Yeah. And I, I remember I walked down to my friend, one of the first, who I knew was around the corner. I was like, can I tell you something? I said, I'm going to go back wrestling. I'm going to go back and touch at wrestling. And I, that's how that kind of came about. And that's, you know. That's how you ended up back in, in the... the in, that's in, literally how I ended up back wrestling, man. Was I seen the back of this thing. I felt confident. I felt in a, play, a good place. No, there's no saying a year beforehand, I could have walked past that poster and just went, yeah. You yeah. know, it was I just, know, maybe I'll right timing. Right timing, man. Just, you know, just head was in a good place. Didn't necessarily manifest it. Didn't go to sleep every night dreaming about it. Just, just happened, you know, and yeah. And now, as, as, as you mentioned about like how you ended up in wrestling, um, so like, I, I reckon the next question I have is basically like uh, Phoenix Wrestling, man. Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. And, like, and, and what's the plans? I mean, like, tell me about how you got there and, and how you kind of like ended up in the bubble of there. But then, like, just, you know, what's the plan going forward? Like, what, what do you, what, like, obviously, I'm like, you know, any wrestler that wants to win, you want to win championships and all that kind of, that's the goal or whatever else. But, like, are you looking to go out on your own and do your own thing as well? Or is it just, are you just riding the wave and, and taking it all in or waiting for this pandemic to fuck off so you can get back in that ring? Okay, that question couldn't be worded any fucking better. Any that was actually perfect because I was going to cover a few things. Phoenix, it, it, the best way to describe this is like Phoenix is my home club, you know? Yeah. Um, CCW was company in Cork. Whatever happened, happened. Not my questions to answer. Um, it closed, simple as. And then there was a couple of wrestlers, trainees that were kind of left with no wrestling school. Um, so at the time, Billy Bedlam, really good friend of mine. Luke Barry wrestled as Marion Armstrong. Um, so we started talking. I was talking to two boys, and they were like, Yeah, do you want to? What are we going to do? Like, we fucking love wrestling. Are we going to have to do something? So a little talk happened. A few quid got put together. And at the very start, it was the three of us. Um, put the money forward and started Phoenix and something like that. And that was this. Um, Bedlam, very passionate, very, 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 very passionate about what he does. Same with Luke, same with myself. Um, just as time went by, um, I found myself being very hard to be involved, being from Limerick and stuff. Um, the company was rather new. So long story short, but there was no qualms, no issues at all. Bedlam is now the full owner, full management of Phoenix. Um, I'm just, I'm a restaurant and a trainee still. Um, I love Phoenix. They've been really, really good to me. Um, again, I'm putting this out there, and this isn't for a fucking pat on the back or anything. I'm saying this because I've talked to Bedlam. Kieran is his name. Um, I've talked to him a lot over this pandemic. And sometimes what a lot of wrestlers, what a lot of fans don't see, and they kind of forget a little bit, is sometimes it can be very hard and frustrating to not only perform at a wrestling show, but to put a show together. All right, It's not just about... Um, showing up on the day and hoping a crowd comes. It's about selling tickets and getting posters ready, advertising, touching base with radio stations, making sure performers are here on time. Um, and Bedlam does this very, very well. And it's a very frustrating job. It can be a frustrating job, but if you love something enough, like you wash that away and, um, and you work towards it, you know what I mean? So with the group in Phoenix, it's very easy for us to work as a team because we all have known each other from beforehand. Yeah. Bedlam is the book or the owner everything there um, but that's not to say like a lot of other people don't jump in and put their hands on there but um, just want to say that like if Bedlam watches this you know that a lot of us do see the work you put in and appreciate it so kudos to you my friend um, Luke Barry we trained me as a wrestler I hadn't wrestled in years so also kudos to Luke Marion Armstrong retrained me and helping me with my promos I was like <laughs> I promo like this, the same, the same. Luke would be like, no, we'll do another one, the same. And he's like, you're doing the same promo all the time, Steve. Just cop it. Luke is actually an actor by trade. Um, oh, yeah, really? So, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was that's his job. He's, he's, he's done theater for years. 
and um, helped me a lot with that, that I hope it stuck to me now, you know what I mean? Um, but he also helped me a lot personally with my, um, I beat myself up a lot if I couldn't get something right, that Luke was the guy that kind of took me aside and like, um, would be like, chill the fuck out, calm down. Just because you didn't get it this time doesn't mean you're getting it next time. And I'm, in my head, it, that sound, that's like, oh, obviously that's right. But then when you do something, especially in a promo and stuff, and, and if it's new to you, well, I'm sure like this, man, you've been in front of a camera, and if something doesn't come across the way that you want it to, it can be very, like, but in my head I thought it came across as this, and then you watch it back, and it's like, that's, that's not what I've fucking done at all, you know? So getting um, advice from Luke and stuff, who a guy that was in front of a camera and stuff, for a long time was really good. That's, uh, that's stuck to me. Um, so, like I said, and, and also um, the Phoenix Training School in Cork at the moment is unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. It's not even a school, man. But it is a school. It's a, it's a fucking studio. Like, Bedlam has put together a studio, like, a, like an old school wrestling studio, like what WSW used to wrestle out of in the late 80s. Or yeah, yeah, like, uh, the, what was it called? It was the... Soundstage. Uh, the power plant. Yeah. Uh, the, that's what they call it, wasn't it? Un- unbelievable, you know, um... There's a bit of, I, I could be wrong in saying this. Um, I haven't been to Cork a whole lot lately. Um, I think there's a bit of a kind of a venue crisis, as far as I know. In a lot of Ireland, there's a venue crisis. Um, so, Bedlam kind of put together something that was, um, so you could have shows in the gym, in the in the facility. And it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Whoever had, whoever held them out down there looks at like the last show that I'd done, which I think was the last show in Irish wrestling, actually, before the whole pandemic hit. Yeah. Um, turned from a training school into a venue and I'm not just talking about a put together venue I'm talking about there was a stage curtains lights sound system videos it's like holy shit so it really really top notch stuff there, you know? I've seen um, I've seen some videos and stuff I've, I've like obviously been posted up about that and um, yeah. as you were saying about Bedlam if, if Bedlam does watch this um, and I have to say um, I, I've been I've seen his progress he's in great shape yeah, yeah, man. He's, uh, again, this, and you know what, man? Because Bedlam knows me as well, like, and he knows his little struggles and blah, 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 here and there, you know? So it's really good to talk to people when you know people are in good places. Um, some people are, have taught, like, if I, I'll put it this way, everyone has that. Everyone has those, that little group of people. Yeah. Like, it's like, if I'm a bit off, I don't expect everyone to notice that I'm a bit off. Like having someone like Bedlam and stuff, it's kind of one of the guys that that goes that rings you, but you know he's ringing you because he knows that you're off, kind of thing, you know. Yeah, he gauges he's, it. He's not just he's a mate of mine beyond being a wrestling promoter or a wrestler. He's a mate of mine, a good mate of mine and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's just, and and he's had his own kind of struggles with his health, I think, recently, which is um, sorry, man, I'm after making Bedlam so very old there. You're not an old no, man. No, no, no. I'm sorry, but he's had his own struggles with um. <laughs> Some problems, whatever. But yeah, he is. He's looking really good, man. He, and he, but he loves training as well. You know what I mean? He's got to enjoy his training. So I like picking up the phone sometimes. And when you, I just, I, I love hearing people when they're a bit passionate about, about anything, really. But especially yeah. when it's training or something, it's, it's just really nice to hear. And, and you know, it's cool. I, I, I think, so, that, I mean, I watch it from behind the scenes. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I see the posts and things from yourselves and, 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 and Phoenix and things. And I just, I just love it, dude. I think it's, like I told you that already. Like um, I was super proud of you. Like when I went to the Dolan show and uh, just to see, you know, just you know, Limerick born. You know, like it's a Limerick show. It's in a Limerick venue, and it's just a Limerick crowd. It was such a good moment, and I wasn't even in the ring. Now when I, I told you the story. Like I was standing there because there was a moment when you came down, and you were doing the Steve Savage, you know, the, with this team song and Steve fucking Savage, and you were really amping it up. You were really fucking in that song. Out the corner of right, out of nowhere, you literally just grabbed my hand and and, and I was like, "That's fucking class." So I, I was engaged in that moment. Um, that that that's what it was, and I know this sounds like cheese, but that nice are those gigs, are those venues, are, not the venues, those shows, and I really hate the sound cliche here, but they are not those shows without the fans that nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, like that, that show could have been in front of five people, like, or it could have been in front, it, it, like. So it really is fans interact. I cannot wait for like to get back to shows again like that where people can be excited again. Yeah. And just 
leave whatever shit you have at the door, leave your emotions or leave anything at the fucking door and just come and enjoy a wrestling show. You know what I mean? Boo and cheer and just be loud. You know what I mean? And just, just that, that aggression. I love seeing people at wrestling shows that are like, I haven't watched this shit for years. And now I'm at a wrestling show. And how fucking cool is this? Like, you know what I mean? There's a guy yeah. in like, you know, like, does, is, is there anything better than just watching a fucking wrestling show? You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's so cool when, when fans are that into it. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it makes a performer perform better, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's an awesome fucking thing. As I was at the show, and you know what I mean? As I was watching it away as a fan, you know what I mean? And I was watching this, said uh, Bedlam and Raven Creed and Session Rot. I just having like the crazy match with the puppet and everything else. And yes, so yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, these are cool, like, crazy good talents, man. Do you know what I mean? Because I remember my mate Phil, you might probably remember Philip O'Connor from years ago. He wrestled with me as well. Um, but um, I remember, like, because when we brought him, he hadn't been to a wrestling show in years. Um, and I remember he said to me mid show, he was kind of going, like, This is a real show. Like, this is a real wrestling show. I was like, yeah. Yeah. He was, and, and he was pumped, man. Like, do you know what I mean? The fact is, oh, they're actually, it's not like one of those, like, you know, like, like you know, it's, it's kind of a bad yeah, yeah, yeah. one. It's not to, to rank on that, but you know what I mean? Just, yeah. But this was a real fellas coming out, like Canadian destroyers, the whole lot. They're showing it all out there. Like, you know what I mean? Such yes, a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then to be there for like your own relation, like your own cousin's match. And that was, that was, that's what I mean about it. That was, that was a moment for me and I wasn't even in the ring. You know, that but, moment yeah, afterwards, yeah. standing there in the harbor with you, that was like, they were real, real moments. You said it at the start, like that was a real thing. Um, um, and that's what wrestling is, man. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to invoke emotion out of you, really, really, like, like you know, when you're sitting there watching it, the like larger than life scenario, because you know the whole fake gets turned around. It's predetermined. It's fucking acrobatic, fucking acting, man. It's 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 a it's a theater show. It's a show, a play. Yeah. It's, it's you know yeah. what I mean. It's it's but you're you know you're you're putting your body on the line to entertain. But um, and I and I say that that line right there. You're putting the body on the line to entertain because of my next question is this. This is where I'm leading into. You got to tell me about the point glass incident, man. Uh, apparently, this is a. Uh, I'm going to quote Luke Barry on this actually, Mary Armstrong yeah. again. Um, apparently, it's part of my gimmick now, because for some reason, anytime I wrestle in Limerick, I land on a fucking point glass. So, like the, I, I know, I know. It's uh, I done a, sh a show in the Strand Hotel. It was the first time I wrestled in Limerick. And I done a, a drop kick in the crowd onto to Ricky, and um, and I land, <laughs> I land, and, I, and you, you do stupid things like you, you know you're landing on the ground, the, the actual ground, but you should yeah. fucking bump like you know. So I, so I take this bump on the ground, and you can tell straight away because there's a difference between getting hurt and and like and feeling a little. I was like, whoa, that's a cold yeah. pain in my back. But I made, <laughs> I made of my Shauna. One of my really close mates came to me that night. So we were going to like, it was our, probably our first time seeing me in Limerick and stuff. And um, we were going to get a bite to eat afterwards and stuff. So Shauna came with her, her husband, Gary, my two closest mates. And they're like, oh, Steve, Steve, Steve. So I take this bump on a pint glass. I didn't know, I didn't know there was a pint glass there. Yeah, yeah. And I get up off the chair and I get up and I'm like, oh, selling back and I fall back, you know, <laughs> onto Shauna. And she's like, all I can hear in my ear is like, my fucking dress, my fucking dress. There's blood all over you. Get off my fucking dress. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, and then I don't know, it happened again. And then another time I was wrestling Justy in Dolan's and I run and I hit this drop kick and I fucking fall on the ground. Maybe I should stop doing these over the shows because people are putting their points on the ground. And I fall on the ground and um, I just remember looking up, I think. I think someone was there that I knew I, I, in the crowd and I just kind of turned, you know, and I'm like, ah, not fucking again is this? And I just touched my back, fucking same place, same, oh, just, and Luke, <laughs> Luke was up the stairs and someone said to him, he goes, um, I think Steve's back is bleeding. And Luke was like, ah, it's a thing he does. It's just a thing he does. <laughs> That's so, your new thing yeah. now, do you know what I mean? But, yeah. um, and, um, and, and, they did you, like, obviously, you, do, you mentioned Justy because I remember you two um, had like a crazy build for your match. Like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a crazy build for your match. Like, and I was actually going to ask you, like, um, out of like obviously because you've wrestled a lot of guys, like, would Justy be up there as as one of your like toughest opponents to date? Like, um, 
Yeah, yeah. Like, but up to one of one of the most respected men, you know, yeah. one one of the most respected. The dude is doing this a long time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, tough. Like, I mean, do, do you know what? Like, if there's any professional fans watching this, Justy is Justy. You know who he is. You know how fucking good he is. You know where he came from. You know where he's been. You know, he, um, top guy. Like, really honored, like, to work with Justy and stuff. Um. Or will I just stay in character so I can try to get another match or two out of us? <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, the, the guy, he's just fucking supreme, man. A world of knowledge, you know what I mean? That, like, and I still, I, I love, so, sometimes you're just kind of like, you're hearing people talking and, you know, it's, um, you're just listening and taking in knowledge, you know what I mean? The day, maybe the day that I fucking stop listening is the day that I shouldn't fucking wrestle, you know what I mean? But like, when I hear guys like Justy are like really experienced guys on the on the scene, um, you know, it just it just amazes me. Like, but like, I, here's a fucking like I've seen Justy get injured before when I was a kid, when I was really when I was really young, right? and I seen him get really fucking injured. You know what I mean? And then I went up to another camp, and Justy is there. He's like, I want to wrestle. I want to wrestle. He's not just a fucking unbelievable wrestler. He's a tough motherfucker, as well, man. He's a tough cunt. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, kudos to that guy. Because yeah, um, I, I think I, I, as I said, if he ends up watching this podcast, I have to apologize to him because during the build your matches, I kind of like kayfabe jumped on the gimmick and was like giving him shit on Twitter, like, but I was all in oh, good fun, here, man. It was all in good fun, like, all in good fun, man, exactly. Interact with people, man, interact with the wrestlers, you know what I mean? I mean feed off, you know. And I mean, this the is wrestlers are going to put stuff out, out online, the wrestlers are going to put promo with those. Interact with them, man. That's what, oh, that's but what but I doing. think what it is is um, because because I wrestled before, I kind of know the shtick. You know what I mean? Like when you two are going at it, I'm not going. Oh, he's he wants to hurt my cousin. You know, it's like I, I I get it. You're really really like working this into then. You're really going for it. But but then again, I will say one thing. There was a level to it where I genuinely wasn't sure at one time. I was like, I don't know if these guys actually even like each other because they're really fucking going for it. That's the art. That's the art of it, right there, man. You know. Dude, come here. I'm not to say. I'm. I'm not to say. Justy doesn't like me. He do fucking hate me if he wants. You know. Yeah. But, you know like, he built a damn good show. That was the thing. But then, and then, you know? then again, sometimes you just like you know. It is what it is. I'll put it. Shall it is what it is. What yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know. But um, I, just, I just want. To, I just want to focus back to another little thing you said. Yeah, go on, yes, circle um, back. Has wrestling like been put on hold for me since, mm-hmm. since the whole pandemic and stuff? And the answer to that and the tr- actual proper answer is it fucking hasn't. You know what I mean? Just because I can't do shows and stuff at the moment yeah. doesn't mean that I can't get up and get my arse in the fucking gym. You know, start training and stuff. Yeah. This lockdown around, I said if I can't wrestle at the moment, then I'm just going to fucking bring wrestling to me. So I actually have a unit that I'm transferring into a gym at the moment. Um. I want to put a wrestling ring in there, which should be here soon. Um, this is all breaking news, you know. Um, if I can't fucking... And wrestling for me, because I have to travel up and down to Cork and stuff, um, yeah. which is totally fine, you know what I mean? Just a little bit taxing when you're trying to work a full-time job sometimes. So my goal, as far as wrestling, is I want to be in a wrestling ring every single fucking day. Every single day, whether I'm training in Cork, I would like to touch base with a couple of guys in Dublin as well over the summer um, and then when I come home to Limerick I have my gym I have a wrestling rink I can roll around somewhere I can bump I want to be around wrestling as much as I'm around tattooing which is every single day yeah. um, so if, if I, I can't I'll put it this way no one's going to knock on my door and say hey man we're bringing wrestling to you all the time we're bringing it you know um, th- I, again I'm 32 now man you know what I mean the longer I wait for someone to knock on my door um I might as well just fucking roll over, you know. Um, so I want to bring wrestling to me. Um, I want to bring some bit of a training facility to Limerick in hopes to work with. I'll always work with guys from Phoenix. Um, it'd be great. I have a few plans. I put it that way. Yeah. I don't want to say a whole lot no, 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 until no. something is in motion, you know. And I would like to come back on and have maybe somewhere down the line and maybe have another chat about. Oh yeah, come here. Yeah, this is the Twist and Thomas podcast, man. Right. I, this is like the bubble that is in which I live in right now in this in this pandemic. I can have you on 
24 fucking times if you want to come back on 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's usually me saying they're, they're going to come back on, hinted, but you even just said it coming back on 100%. But I will throw one thing out there. Wasn't Stephen, Mr. Savage, if you get a wrestling ring in Limerick, right? <laughs> I'll happily let you throw me around that thing for a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm see need how it feels, man. You know, I, I need I need training partners, and also because um, we've talked about this. Like I said this to you. Like I mean, I know this is a crazy fucking way to phrase it because it's like a fucking drug reference. But um, I haven't wrestled in 16 years, and that thought has never left my head. Like I mean, 16 years, and I have not been able to like let that dragon go in any well, you way. Know, so. This is another little drive for, for like, again, man, like, and I hate to be the guy that's like, I love my city, buy my tickets. It's not that, man. Like, I'm not moving out of Limerick. You know what I mean? I'm not. I've had opportunities to live in different countries, work with stuff. So I'm not moving out of Limerick, you know? Uh, the, the, here. Lim, Limerick's never had, um, like, a training facility for wrestling, you know? Um, yeah, never. So, but, I mean, I, I just feel like who's... now. I, 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 like I said, at the moment, I'm currently just putting something together. But who's to say, well, why, why, why... Can't there be one here? You know what I mean? If I don't put one here, then who fuck's going to put one here? And it's again, nothing is in stone with this at the moment, but it's in motion. And um, yeah. if I didn't think it was fully in motion, I wouldn't have mentioned it. Like, so we have something. And I just, you know, there hasn't been, and I do get a lot of people from Limerick saying, I would love to train wrestling, but I have a full time job. It's hard for me to get to Dublin. It's hard for me to get to Cork. Um, I would like, and it's, come here. Some people just want to train. You know, not and in a trend in a wrestling environment or something. Um, there's no reason why I shouldn't. You know, yeah. I'm in a good headspace. I have all the support in the world. Um, I have a passion that I fucking absolutely love. So why not put something on my doorstep? You know, and and, and invite people into this that that, fucking, that have wanted to try something. You know, I have a great group of guys from Phoenix that I can work with. I'm going to touch base with a few wrestlers from Dublin. Um, some really nice guys and. If people are up for training, then who's fucking who, who might stop them? Like you know, um, the fact that you're you're, I mean, it, it's gonna be it'll be a weird thing to have, like because you just said it there. There's never been, like, and 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 I don't think we're wrong in that in any way by saying this. There's never been a training school in Limerick City regarding no. pro wrestling. Never, it's never happened. No. Like there was a reason. And I said this before, there's a reason like like myself and my and my mates when we designed our own kind of like you know group and federation thing back in the day, it was a reason we like had to take it to like um the local like the parks, find the corners of places yeah, of to course, do it, man, yeah. um, and record these matches and have have all these these kind of like you know pre-planned kind of you know like events and things because we we didn't have a ring and, and man, and even at that point it was like when I made my first movie, when I made the fucking movie. I didn't fucking know where to put it. I never clue. I just, I, I always knew I just wanted to make a movie. It's the same when I wrestled, when I was wrestling. I just wanted to wrestle. So I didn't like, know yeah. where to get a ring. I didn't know like how to go about all this stuff. So we just kind of did it with what we had. But the fact that you're doing it this way and you're pushing this to do it and really kind of like, I mean, not to sound crazy, but that could cement the legacy, man. Well, uh, look, you I would just, be the first. Like I said, man, I just, it's just some. You know, I, I like I like training with people, and it's something. And we can talk about wrestling training over here, but I like just training in general. And I, there's a lot of guys that um that I talk to. You know what I mean? That that are all. I'd love to be trained. I'd love to get in shape and stuff like this. You know, yes. but I don't want to go to a commercial gym. Or I'm don't want to jump into these circuits. I don't want to jump in. You know, and I get it, man. You know what I mean? Because I was in that place. I'd love to give someone someone I said. I'm not asking you to be a wrestler. I'm not asking you to even get in a ring. I said, I'm going to come up here and do a couple of circuits for me. If you want, come in here at 2 o'clock in the fucking day when there's no one here. Use a bench. Get used to using a TRX. Use a battle rope. Do, do some push-ups if you want in your own comfortable space. Because, like I said, going back to that, what I said a while ago, if you can get someone past that little that little mark, yeah. th that could change someone's fucking life, man. You know what I mean? And yeah. As cliche as that sounds, you know, like, there's other guys that I know that, that were from Limerick that touched that wrestling. That kind of stopped because the travel was a bit much or whatever. But like, who's to say if well, something wasn't on their doorstep, they could have been the next big fucking star. Like, we, you know, it's just it is. It's just been a little difficult, I think, um, with a lot of people having to travel to Dublin and stuff. I mean, there's but great schools, man. At the end of there's yeah. great schools and training schools in Ireland. Just I think the travelling park kind of puts a bit of a block in the road for a few people. So if I could put something here, 
and touch base with, with trainees, with people from around the country, I'm, I'll gladly do it. You know what I mean? It's, and it will gladly happen, you know, so. I mean, I, I, I don't know any way, any better way to finish this fucking entire chat when than just having a bombshell like that laid on the thing. Steve Savage is going to bring fucking Pro Wrestling to Limerick. And I mean, I say this, and I'm, I know, I know, like, you know what I mean? It seems like I'm, I'd be, I'm, I can be very jokey and bouncy, man, right? But I do say it. Seeing the journey that you've gone on and seeing you change yourself, like, you know I mean? like, I don't mean just change yourself, I mean, but physically, mentally, I mean, really kind man. of focus it, man. And because, you know, I've known you your whole life. I mean, and me and you, we both talk about it. You have kind of, Went up and fell off the mountain and crawled back out of it. Do you know what I mean? We both yeah, done it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. we're both fucking practically sober and just fucking older and wiser minds now, man. Do you know what I mean? So you know what I mean? It's it, it's it's good to have a kinship there, man. It's good to know that, like you know, like you didn't like you did it on your own. That's the thing. You did it on your own, but you had people here supporting you along the way, um, and and that's the thing to remember. But man, you're a fucking thirty-two. I am nearly forty. All right. Hey. Age is a number, man. It's a number. Do you know what it is, Steve? I even said it to my brother Dan. I said, age is only a number. And he says it to me the whole time. <laughs> As I joke with him, it's like, yeah, age is only a number until my back starts getting at me, my fucking knee, yeah. my ankle. <laughs> yeah. You know? But um, well, there's, I tell a, you, bit, there's a bit more me. maintenance and a bit more oil needed for the body, you know? But it's just a number, man, you know? Yeah. And I will honestly say this, whoever, if someone's watching this or someone is wanting to do this, don't be the guy that said, I should have done that. It's something I try to stick by. I hate yeah. to be the guy that said, I should have done that. You know what I mean? Or even if try you it. Just fucking try it. If you Because at least you can always say, at least I tried it. I don't want to be the guy that's 65 sitting in a pub saying, I could have fucking done that no years ago. I could. Yeah. I want to be the guy that's maybe sitting in a coffee shop when I'm 65 saying, remember I done this? Remember this story? You know what I mean? Because what, is life? what is life if not a chapter of stories? Exactly, you know man, I mean? exactly. When you get to I the I love age... this conversation, man. I'm really happy I came on and had this conversation. I feel very... I'm awake for the fucking night now, but I feel very positive, man. Really <laughs> uplifted chatting to you and stuff. Oh, God, man, come here. Um, I, I'm, I'm delighted to have you on, man, because... As I said, I know I know how busy you are, man, with, with the job and trying to bounce between and, and just lockdown in general has everyone kind of locked in their own bubbles. But um, I'm I'm so happy you came on because we've got to have a proper good chat and just and just waffle on, man. So it's been fucking brilliant. Excellent. So, Do you know what? Count, count me in for another couple of wrestling conversations because sometimes, again, as the older you get, maybe your couple of wrestling friends might slide off there and there. But maybe we could jump on and have a bit of wrestling or if there's a pay-per-view or try to review a show or watch something. I um, believe in... I will even set up a monthly show with you if you want. We'll do one a month where we just come in and we just dive into the wrestling. I'm in for it, man. I'm here. I'm right here. here. You heard it right here. Once a month, me and Steve are going no. to do this. There um, you go, and as man. I said, um, yeah. So maybe you, before we end this interview, maybe, maybe as you were saying about moments, do things happen? Do you know what I mean? And you know, you said about the, you saw the flyer on the window and just, just sparked your brain. So maybe, uh, yeah, so maybe this conversation is the spark that fucking gets this this old buck off his ass and back in that ring. Well, here you go. We'll see how, the, we'll see I'll how be, this rolls forward, be, my friend. I'm, 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 I'm driven to help you as much as you fucking can. If you want to get up and train, I'm there for man, you know what I mean? So... I mean, as I said, I mean, it, after 16 years and that dragon won't leave my brain, I think it's time we put it to bed, you know? Just try it. I look, like I said... Let's try we'll it. be in touch. Let me let me finish up what I'm working on at the moment, and, um, and uh, we'll make something happen, man. Okay. And on that note, Steve, this is the Twisted Tubs podcast. I am your host, Stephen Tubbly, aka Twisted Tubs. He is from the city that is fucking hard knocks. He is Steve <laughs> fucking Savage. Now throw those thumbs up, and we'll send him home. <laughs> see you later, bro. Thanks, man. All right, I'll see you later, buddy.